Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back along to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. On this edition of the show, uh, we're going to be talking Romeo Lavia. We're going to be talking William Saliba, as we seem to do uh, every single day at the moment. We're going to be discussing why everybody wants to see Arsenal crash and burn and why the rest of the Premier League should actually want Arsenal to go on and win the Premier League title this season. We'll get into all of that on this uh, shorter edition of the show. It is a pre-recorded edition. Uh, I am in the 90 min offices. Uh, lovely uh, bit of uh, memorabilia on the wall. I think I picked the right side room to go into, but just a quick disclaimer, you you might get somebody walking in the door uh, at any point during the live podcast. So um, I say live, it's being recorded. But am I going to sit down and edit that type of thing out? Probably not, if I'm being honest with you. So anyway, uh, here we are. hope you're all good. I hope you're all well. Uh, I hope you've had a good Wednesday so far. Uh, just a quick plug uh, for my latest uh, blog entry, which is on the chroniclesofaguna.com. I'll leave the link in the description below for those of you uh, that want to check it out. The title is, The Rest of the Premier League Should Be Supporting Arsenal on Wednesday Rather Than Being Against Us. And in that... I talk about the fact that I think it's important for English football, actually, that Arsenal uh, go on and win the Premier League title. I talk about the fact that Arsenal represent the complete opposite of what Manchester City are. And I'm, I want to be careful because what I'm not trying to do is to say to Manchester City fans, oh, you shouldn't be able to enjoy the success that your club is currently having because of the way the money came about, etc., etc. The fans are faultless here, right? The fans are not to blame uh, for any of that stuff. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that as a, a football fan of a certain generation, I know I'm, it makes me sound really old when I say this and I'm not old, but I think football fans of, of, certain, of a certain generation and of a certain age um, have sort of a very different set of values when it comes to the game. And I think that a lot of those values and a lot of what we used to hold dear has been compromised in recent years it's not something that's just happened yesterday it's it's been going on for a little while um you know history class tradition all of those things are becoming a little bit irrelevant in that there are clubs that i would say are medium-sized clubs uh who have sort of attracted very wealthy owners those owners have come in put crazy money in in terms of the investment and um and now the problem is is that uh you know we're we're sort of seeing a shift, the power shift, where money supersedes everything in football. All of those things I've mentioned, history, class, tradition, uh, size of your fan base, etc., etc. So we're going down a different path. The game is changing, not for the better, in my opinion. Um, and I kind of just encapsulated my thoughts on that subject in this blog. It's not a very long piece, um, but I think you'll, you'll find it to be something that a lot of you will probably agree with. I might be sort of jumping the gun in, in, in thinking that, but I think a lot of you will agree with the sentiment of it. Uh, the link is in the description. Do check it out. But the big story that I wanted to talk about today um, is with regards uh, to uh, Romeo Lavia. Now, the um, Southampton man has been quite impressive this season, and that's not always been easy for somebody playing in this Southampton side because they've been incredibly poor. They're down at the bottom of the table. It looks as though they're going to get relegated. And so naturally what happens when you get to this stage in the season and a club like Southampton are staring relegation in the face, people start to get linked with their better players, of which Romeo Lavia is certainly one. Um, I've seen him a couple of times live this season and I thought he was really, really good. Uh, looks mature beyond his years. Looks like he's technically sound and looks like he has all the physical attributes that you want in a central midfield player. I think if you fast forward four or five years, we might look at him and think he could play the Thomas Partey role for this Arsenal side. But of course, you know, it is um, it is early days for Romeo Lavia. And this is where clubs now uh, that will be looking at him need to make the decision as to whether they see that progress, how likely they see that progress Um you know, sort of happening and whether or not he's worth taking a bit of a punt and a bit of a gamble on. And I say gamble, look, people will look at that and go, that's not really fair because, you know, he has performed. He's been one of the shining stars in a really poor team that have, have not done much this season. Um, and and so to kind of judge him too much on that basis is maybe unfair. I mean, I was looking at his heat map earlier on and he literally covers pretty much every blade of grass. He's all over the park. So mobility is definitely there. 
technical ability is there. Um, and, and obviously the fact that he's just, I think, 19 years old at the moment makes him a real hot property and someone that I think a lot of, of teams will be looking at. According to Sofa Score, his valuation at the moment is around about uh, 20 million pounds. If you look at um, transfer market, it's about 21, 22 million pounds. So that's the valuation around which these clubs uh, have him at the moment. But we also know that Manchester City have a buyback clause uh, over Romeo Lavia, which becomes active in 2024. Now that buyback clause is only valid while he's at uh, Southampton, if he indeed still is at Southampton in 2024. If Southampton choose to sell him before that, for example, this summer, then they'd be able to, to pocket whatever it is that they can negotiate. And, um, and they probably stand... I'm not going to say to get more than 40 million, but I think they could probably get that around about now and, and save themselves, um, you know, the, the, the trouble. And, and, and I don't, I say save themselves the trouble. If they do go down, which is very, very likely at the moment, is looking increasingly likely, then they're going to end up in that situation where you're down in the championship. You've got players that everybody's looking for. Your finances are going to be hit by being in the championship. We always talk about the parachute payments and how that can help and support clubs that go down. That's what it's there to do. But there's no doubt that when you do go down, financially you suffer. And a lot of clubs that go down with Premier League squads do end up having to offload a lot of them to try and balance those books and to try and um, navigate their way through a season in the championship. And that's you know, if they come straight back up, we've seen lots of clubs go down and not come straight back up. It's a very difficult and demanding league. But Romeo Lavia will be someone that Southampton will look at now and feel like, OK, he's still got a lot more um, to achieve. There's still a long way for him to go in terms of his development. But, you know, what we're seeing now with Romeo Lavia is someone that's done enough to attract interest of some of the Premier League's big hitters. And if you read all of the reports doing the rounds at the moment, uh, there are a number of clubs looking at him. So we've heard uh, that Chelsea are interested in him. They're having a look at him. Uh, we've heard that Manchester United have him on their radar, as the Newcastle United, who are also said to admire him. Now, these this report is according uh, to my colleague at 90 Min, Graham Bailey. And, um, and he goes into quite a bit of detail. He says that sources have told 90 Min uh, that Manchester City have uh, that buyback option on Lavia, which becomes active in 2024. But Southampton are keen to do business for a potentially higher price this summer in order to try and maximise his value. He goes on to say that Chelsea are ready to reignite their interest uh, despite having lots of midfielders on their books and that he's viewed uh, by Arsenal as an alternative to Declan Rice, who we've heard a lot about. Now, I've got to be honest, if we end up with Romeo Lavia instead of Declan Rice this summer, I would be a little bit underwhelmed. And the reason I say that is because Declan Rice is a ready-made international footballer that comes into our squad and instantly makes it better. Romeo Lavia is one full of potential, but I don't think we're at the stage yet in our development as a team where we can be going and dropping 40, 45 million pounds on players that might come good. I think we've done that already on a couple of occasions. Fabio Vieira is a good example of that. 35 odd million pounds on him. And has he come good yet? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for a bit longer, but I need to see more from him next season to suggest that that or to justify the fact that we spent that type of money on him. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how big Arsenal go in the summer. Now, we've seen Arsenal spend money over recent seasons and one of the things I've repeatedly said to you guys is that given what we know about our ownership that is going to stop at some point or at least calm down but hopefully having you know secured Champions League football which we're just a handful of points away from doing that will give the club the financial boost that they need to be able to continue to spend and to continue to improve this squad develop this squad and to continue to build uh, what Mikel Arteta is wanting to build and to help him in terms of being able to go and fight on multiple fronts, in terms of being able to last the distance, which we still don't know if we can do just yet. Um, you know, there's seven Arsenal games to go in the Premier League and, you know, it could end in glory. It could end in disappointment, although whatever way you look at it and, and however way it goes from now on in, 
you'll say it was a successful season for Arsenal. But, you know, there's a chance to make it a really, really special season. And there's a chance that we might just fall short because of injuries, because of players losing form at a key time. And and if we had a deeper and stronger squad, I know it's all ifs and buts, but you'd feel more confident in us being able to go on and finish the job. So we certainly do need to bolster in that area in the summer. Thomas Partey, impressive player, fantastic player. Had an off day at West Ham. We've spoken about that at length, but he's a top, top player. Beyond him, though, I don't think we have that type of midfielder of the right profile to be able to come in and eventually take his place, eventually replace him. Jorginho was signed on the short term. That's worked out okay up until now, but it was very much a deal for the short term. It was never something that Arsenal were looking to do for the longer term for a number of reasons. Jorginho's age, Jorginho you know, isn't really the exact type of player that you're looking for. He's not a like for like with Thomas Partey. He's got some of the same qualities in that he's quite press resistant, quite good on the ball, good at line breaking with his passing, but he isn't anywhere near as mobile enough, for example. So Arsenal know that. Arsenal are well aware of that. And um, yeah, it kind of is what it is. We've we've got to see how the summer unfolds. I said to you guys, I don't want to get too caught up on transfers I don't want to get too um, absorbed in by all of these stories and that actually the focus should be on the football right now but I expect somebody at the club probably Edu to be already looking at this stuff to be already across it um, because as we've seen in recent seasons with a lot of these deals if you snooze you lose so we need to make sure that we know what we want to do in the summer that we know where we're at that we know what we can do that we know what we can't do and that we have that shortlist ready to go when the summer comes along and we can continue to bolster the squad and build. So I really like uh, Lavia. What I've seen of him has, has impressed me. Um, but I also acknowledge that at 19 years old, you're talking about someone that could blow up or you're talking about someone that could flatter to deceive. And that's my concern about this. You know, for example, if if Southampton dig their heels in and say we want 50 55 million for Romeo Lavia which I think would be outrageous but I wouldn't put it past them and you're telling me that Declan Rice is available for 70 for example then then I'm going with Declan Rice all day because I think that is someone that can come in and help us instantly there's an element of risk in going for someone like Romeo Lavia and it's on the club to decide whether that risk is worth taking so yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, to see if this story develops. But according to these reports, uh, he is seen by Arsenal Football Club as a potential alternative for Declan Rice. Will he end up at Arsenal? We'll soon find out, I'm sure. Uh, just looking at some of the statistics around uh, Romeo Lavia's season so far. Uh, he's played 22 times in the Premier League, started 19 uh, of those games. He's got just the one goal in the league, but that's not really... Uh, what he is about um, in terms of um, accuracy 87% pass accuracy 90% uh, in his own half 84% in the opposition's half um, averages 1.1 interceptions per game 1.9 tackles per game um, errors that have led to goals zero which is obviously something that you want uh, in that that area of the park um, and in terms of his average player rating according to sofa score is just under seven out of ten which is 6.84 now normally i'd look at that and go well that's not very inspiring you know it's seven out of ten is is good it's solid but is it something that will make you go wow i should go after this player but the, the truth is look at the shit season that southampton have had look at where they are in the league look at the struggles they've had look at how many managers they've been through it must be incredibly difficult to perform under those circumstances. So for him to even have uh, a decent sort of rating, um, you know, on the board, I think is is something that I think we should take encouragement from and, and something that he deserves probably more credit for than he'll actually get. Because just under 7 out of 10 in a side that has underperformed in the way that Southampton have. I mean, I say underperformed. I think a lot of people expected them to be in trouble. But yeah, it's just um, interesting, isn't it? Uh, really, really interesting. Okay, uh, so that's that. Now, William Saliba, what's the deal with him? Um, we spoke about him at length on yesterday's show with Dan Potts. Check it out if you haven't done so already. We talked about the fact that uh, William Saliba is uh, back doing some form of training. We saw him on the exercise bikes with Mohamed El Nenny. 
um, which gives us encouragement. But is he going to be available for Friday? I don't think he is. According to reports, he's not likely to be. I think Kaya Kainak of London put that out earlier today and I agree with him. And even if there is a chance that Saliba will be back on Friday, I think you probably don't risk it. Now, I've spoken before about the fact that I'd be worried about him coming in cold at Manchester City, but a William Saliba coming in cold, but maybe 5-10% fitter in terms of his recovery, I think is something that we kind of have to choose uh, over this game against Southampton, which won't be easy, by the way, and we'll be previewing at length on tomorrow's show. But yeah, um, you know, it doesn't look like he's going to be around on Friday. I'm okay with that as long as we can try and get him back in the picture for City because I'm really, really worried about going into that game with Rob Holding at centre-back. I'm sorry, I know people keep saying you've got a Rob Holding agenda, blah, blah, blah. I, I genuinely don't. I just think the level of the two players is so different. You know, one is up here when he's at his best. One is down here even when he's at his best. And when you're talking about Saliba, even if you knock him down a peg or two, because of the lack of fitness and the fact that he's been out, I'd still trust him a lot more because more than anything else, stylistically, he fits the team much, much better. So that's the latest um, on uh, on Saliba. Uh, we've talked about Romeo Lavia. Um, I'm not going to spoil the blog too much. Um, the link is in the description. Check it out. Uh, but on the blog, I talked about the fact that the rest of the Premier League should want Arsenal to go on and win it. And, um, and I detailed uh, some of the reasons why. So please uh, do check that out as well if you haven't done so already. The website is brand spanking new, www.thechroniclesofaguna.com. I think we've only put uh, one or two posts out previous to this one. Um, and they did some really great numbers, which I, I wasn't expecting given it's a brand spanking new website. Uh, so any love on the website will be very, very much appreciated. Share it retweet the article which I've posted on my Twitter at Harry Simeon. Um I've put the link in the community tab on the YouTube channel as well so any love there uh, would be helpful as well as uh, we look to get the word out and, and the more traction we get um, the more I'll be able to dedicate some of my time uh, to writing more of those and to provide uh, producing other content uh, for the website as well so um, yeah thank you guys all so much again apologies it's not a live version today I did say to you guys that I'll keep the time slot and I'll make sure the consistency is there and I am doing that uh, but that does mean from time to time when there are clashes with my work schedule that I'm going to have to uh, pre-record some of these episodes but Romeo Lavia would he be a good fit is he someone you'd like to see come to Arsenal let me know in the comments section below and would you risk William Saliba against Southampton if there is a chance he'll be available I don't think there will be but if there is would you be looking at giving him maybe 15-20 minutes just to get into the swing of things or is that too great a risk to take ahead of that game at the Etihad on Wednesday night a week today wow what a game uh, that is going to be leave a like subscribe to the channel you know the drill by now I'll see you all soon until next time goodbye